Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, thanks for having me. I first want to say thanks to Salar and uh, Delphine and also Clayton and the whole team with the World VR Forum. As a second year forum and conference, it's pretty amazing what's being accomplished here. And it's really inspiring to talk to other filmmakers and people that are doing VR and pushing the technologies of this incredible space that we're in. So um, I'm with a company called Real Effects. Um, uh, we've done probably 62, 63 projects to date. So I thought I'd just start with a quick clip showing you some of the stuff that we've done because my focus today is going to be the perspective of Hollywood, from my perspective, in how they're viewing and embracing VR, both the good and the bad of it. So let's start with a quick clip of some of the work that we've done and are doing. Okay, ready? There we go. It's completely immersive. Luke Wilson here. We got a game against Cass here next week. There's some really cool stuff there, I hope. I hope you got a little taste of it. But um, So we, we're veterans in the VR business, which, as many people have said, that means we've been in it for three years, uh, which makes us old timers. Uh, but what's really cool is that most of the people that we see coming into this have done something in the industry before, whether it's films, filmmaking, entertainment. And our focus was commercial production, doing advertising. That moved us into long-form content, meaning entertainment pieces and films that we started doing with studios, some of our own and some for others. And then that led us into something that I think is a bit of a precursor to VR, which is themed entertainment and theme parks. We've done a lot of, we did Despicable Me theme park ride. Um, anybody been to Universal Studios? Okay, Simpsons ride, Despicable Me ride, if you're on that. We did all the content for that. But if you think about that, that's virtual reality in a communal setting. It's the same concept. You're immersed in an experience. We didn't know it at the time because VR wasn't hot yet, but the experiences that we were uh, gaining both technically and creatively in that space helped us evolve our studio to the next evolution, which was the virtual reality piece. So when we, there's two, two areas that we started getting focus. When we first got in the business, like many, uh, we got involved in the Oculus Kickstarter campaign. When that came out, we looked at it and said, oh crap, this is another way of telling a story. Something that's super cool for us to extend our stories in advertising, a business we were already in, or in theme parks, a business we were already in, and also more importantly in films, like Book of Life, our own film. So we didn't look at it as in any way in the shape or form uh, of the industry that it's grown to. At the time, we just said, how do we take our films and take Book of Life and do something and bring people into our films rather than just present it? So that was the idea with us and VR. Out of the gate, there's this really cool slide, which is over there. It's not up there. I'm gonna keep poking you guys, come on. Uh, it, our first project was Pacific Rim, right out of the gate. And uh, we got a little lucky, legendary. We'd been working with the studio at the time. We had zero time on this project. But the idea was, hey, we got something for Comic-Con. This really cool thing called VR, can you guys do a piece with Pacific Rim? There's no time, there's no budget. Everything was working against us. And of course, we said yes. And uh, what we delivered was something that still, you know, if you take a look at it, it was one of the first, considered one of the first big Hollywood marketing pieces ever, and um, we got real lucky with that. It was at Comic-Con, I think it was 2014. The lines were crazy, and it was really simple. If you look at it, there were no haptics. There's a million things that we would have done different, but at that time, it proved the concept of being able to actually do something that was tied to a film and that was extending the experience. From there, that opened us up. 
we started getting calls from other studios, and the projects were all had a theme. And there's four really cool slides I would be going through right now showing you those. The first one with Guillermo del Toro involved in, the, in, in um, Pacific Rim was launched as a big activation at Comic-Con, and then we distributed or was distributed a, for, through a variety of uh, distribution mechanisms at the time, which was very limited, basically YouTube. We put it on um, Gear VR, that was about it. We ported it, everything was being figured out, all the technology was wonky. We were creating technology, working with the partners to try to figure out how to get it out of Vive or out of Oculus and then you know, um, uh, create different versions of it. So then the next project that we did was Book of Life, which was our film. Super cool because we had the assets. And we thought, Dell came to us and said, you guys are using a lot of Dell machines. We want to do something with Book of Life. We said, no problem. Let's take the assets that we're doing. And we created this scene where in, there's Manolo goes to the, to the land of the remembered and he shows up and it's his first day and he rides on this horse into this really cool space. Well, the camera's set in front of him. You're following, you're seeing the action. And so what we did is we simply changed the action of the camera. Much like theme parks, you have a, another camera. What's that camera? The motion ride. When you're sitting in a motion ride, in a theme park experience, that is another camera. That's helping you set your experience. So if that's the way we looked at it. We changed the camera, and instead of watching Manolo go down on a horse, you are Manolo. Then we did Lionsgate called, and we did probably four projects with him. Um, so then the next project, Lionsgate, got a, we got a hold of, we did um, Insurgent, which was a really cool VR experience and app. It was more focused, focused on the Gear VR, but what was cool about it was it was an 18-wheeler packaged up with an entire experience, and this massive activation toured marketing and promoting the movie with our VR experiences in it, and there was a variety of other elements to it, all right? Then the next one was Hunger Games. Hunger Games was a piece that we did um, that was really kind of a retrospective on all the films. They're like Harry Potter fans and, and you know, fans of, of, of movies like that cry when it's the last movie, right? So they said, let's take our, our viewers back through time and show them everything and remind them of everything they, they enjoyed through the movie, okay? So we did that. There was a massive activation behind that, and then there was a big um, kind of a funhouse experience, and then it was distributed through a, a variety of mobile platforms. So, what is it about the theme of the Hollywood focus, of the Hollywood approach to the films that I just mentioned? Marketing. Marketing and promotion. That's the challenge in Hollywood. It's currently the benefit, it's currently right now, that's the great thing, is that big studios are taking their films and they're saying, let's create a VR piece or let's create an experiential piece of content to do what? Market and promote our movie. But in the process of production, that's at the very end. It's almost an afterthought. It's being driven by marketing and digital without the filmmaker's input. They're too busy delivering the film. But the reasons that that's the model in Hollywood right now is because that's where the bucket of money is. It's marketing dollars that are curr it's currently funding Hollywood's relationship to virtual reality. Good, bad, or ugly, I'll, I'll say, I'll take it right in the middle. We're doing some really cool projects and really cool marketing pieces with some great studio partners. Now, there's this really cool graph that I actually presented and I created at two o'clock in the morning last night just for you guys, and it's right there. And if we had it, you would love it. But there's a discipline, is Hollywood is set up very vertically. The production process, the hierarchy, it's siloed. And the idea is to take a film, start the film, only certain people can see it, then you get your director and then it moves up the chain, and then move up the chain, and then maybe some more people, marketing can finally take a look at it. And by the time anybody in some of the ancillary mediums, like games, et cetera, it's, it's down the chain of the production process. You have no opportunity to create great ideas that might be able to be infused into the creative process, right? And VR, because it's so new, is at the very tail end, it's marketing. What we're trying to move is trying to move that model and not go silo, not go vertical, but go more horizontal. 
to bring the process out of marketing. It's still gonna have a marketing function and a marketing benefit, but imagine a film when VR is being considered when the script's being written. Imagine a film that maybe it's not at the script stage, maybe it's even, it's even further down the, the path. There's a couple films that we're doing that on right now. We're doing a, um, anybody like Scooby-Doo? Scooby-Doo, all right. There was a couple of really cheesy live action films uh, a few years ago, but it kills it at the box office. We're doing a fully animated feature film with Warner Brothers. Uh, it's a complete reinvention, very cinematic. It's all CG. It's kind of like Lego Movie meets Guardians of the Galaxy. It's a little irreverent. And there's Hanna-Barbera characters involved in it. Because we're working so closely with Warner Brothers, and they are very um, progressive when it comes to VR, they listened to us. And we said, you don't have to pay us. We're going to come up with concepts because we're making the movie. We can't help ourselves. We're going to take our VR team and move them right here when the script is still being formed because there may be an idea that we come up with that can unlock really cool narrative and storytelling pieces, maybe breadcrumbs to the final release of the film. Maybe it's something that the filmmaker wants to experiment and then elaborate on in a series later. Those are impossible opportunities if it's done at the end of the production cycle. The filmmaker's too busy. They're delivering a film there at crunch time. But if you can involve that person or that individual early in the process, you have a benefit that's going to pay off downstream. That's the exciting part of where studios are starting to lean. And so where's Hollywood's relationship with VR right now? It's a super important one because there's money, there's revenue, there's dollars that can be spent to experiment with really cool VR and AR ideas. But the studios that get locked into that myopic vertical process aren't going to advance our industry. It's up to this industry and for us to push small filmmakers and indie filmmakers and studios to think a little bit more, more uh, I don't know, a little more advanced and a little bit more proactive. There's this other really cool slide right now and a clip from a Power Rangers project that we just did. This was an interesting one, and it'll, it'll, it'll actually um, summarize what I'm saying about Hollywood's relationship with VR. We were doing a really cool project with, well, it was, it was Power Rangers, the launch of the Power Rangers film. And then we had a really cool concept and idea that we were pitching. But our idea was a bit too big for budget and time. Separately, we were dealing with Qualcomm, a partner to create a VR experience for this technology partner. So as we started to talk to them, we said, well, what are you trying to promote and do? And what's, what are you going to show, Qualcomm? Well, we're releasing this really cool chip. It's called the Snapdragon 485. I, I forgot what that is. It's super fast, and it's, we want to demonstrate the power of that in VR. So we said, well, how do you want to demonstrate that? Do we want to do a brand piece for you? That's one way to look at it. Or maybe what if you were tied to a film, a film that has a great following, um, that hits your demographic, so we match made. We brought Lionsgate together, we got Qualcomm together, sprinkled a little fairy dust on it, and then a partnership was born, and what we released at, at CES, at Qualcomm's booth, was one of the first um, six DOF mobile experiences, which was Power Rangers. If, if you know what that, the impact of that is, is, is that six degrees of freedom is in a tether device, typically. So, so being able to have six DOF mobile was pretty amazing, and Qualcomm actually went so far, there weren't any HMDs available at the time. They created their own, manufactured their own head-mounted display. The chip was in there, and you're able, you know, we had, to, we had to literally pull people off of the, the handles to say, no, you can walk around. It isn't 360 just because it's mobile. It's six stuff, and it's just the tip of the iceberg. So it took a little tiny company like ourselves. That's not a pat on our back. I'm just giving you a demonstration of just because a studio has done it doesn't mean it has to be done that way. Just because something hasn't been done, especially now in this industry, question everything. We have this little theme around our company, and the idea is everything that we do today is wrong tomorrow. We say that to ourselves. And if we wake up that morning and it's right, well, keep it. But guess what? Tomorrow it's going to be wrong again. And in an industry that moves along in dog years, we're moving seven years at a clip, that's super important. So the exciting part is to see where Hollywood is going, and I think where it's going to go, and I'll give you some examples, 
is where comic books went, it is where um, books went, and it's where video games went. 25 years ago, would have anybody, any of these comic geeks out of here ever thought that you'd be seeing Marvel movies based upon these comic books that you secretly read in your bedroom? No, but they did. Same thing with books to franchise films. When's VR going to wag the Hollywood tail? When is a concept or a, a piece of IP, a piece of content, going to be born out of VR and eventually make a film? My friend Maureen over at Baobab, they're right on the verge. You got Penrose. If you haven't seen Arden's Wake, got to check it out. They're, we're already there. I mean, we're in an industry that's three years old, and there's content being created and content that's being originated that potentially could become a theatrical film, just like comics, just like books, just like everything else. That's the exciting part. That's the future. That's where we hope it, it's going. Uh, there's a lot of studio partners that are going there. So anybody that's a filmmaker or a content creator, grab that mantle, push it. That's where Hollywood needs to embrace virtual reality. Who needs visuals? Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.